You're refilling your God tank. Uh, what is it they say in, um, is it Lutheran churches? I don't even know. I'm not a church person. Um, peace be with you or peace unto you or whatever they say. I just feel like peace. God is saying peace to you, peace to us. When those things come, just let them go and look up. Let them light up the darkness, right? Amen. Amen. I don't have anything profound to share, so does anybody else have anything? Any testimonies, any prayer requests? Yeah, Donnie. else have any prayer requests? Yeah, Mike. Yeah, uh, I've had an awesome time on Grandma Hunter's birthday. Appreciate you guys' prayers. Appreciate the worship team covering all of God. Just, I watched the video. It was an awesome job. Yeah. Hats yeah. off to the very boys. You can keep stepping on and impressing for us. I uh, did get an opportunity to pray for my uh, oldest uncle who uh, he had uh, two tumors in his brain and a spot on his lungs and they had doomed him cancer. So I was able to snag him off to the side, lay hands on him, and then pray for him. Um, so I'm believing for God for a miracle, uh, not only for his life and his testimony, but for mm -hmm. my younger uncle, who's two years older than me, to have a witness in his life of how God can move. Their mom prayed for me, my grandma prayed for me years and years ago, and it's, uh, it's not only me. I'm praying that this is only them too also. Amen. Yeah. It was an awesome time to pick up for my daughter, grandson, and all the rest of my family that was out there. not believe it. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, that we set aside this time for you, Lord, to come together, Lord, in fellowship, to come and listen for your word, Lord, to lift our voice and worship and praise to you, Lord. We thank you for those that are here tonight, Lord, that you encourage us, that you fill us with your peace, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that when we lay those things at your feet, we lay our burdens down, Lord, and we take up your yoke, Lord. Your yoke is light, Lord. We lay those burdens, those distractions right there at your feet, Lord. And we come before you tonight to lift you up and magnify you, Lord, to worship you. We look to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your peace that passes all understanding, Lord. Thank you for a hope, Lord, a firm foundation, Lord, that we can stand, Lord, when all around us seems to be going by the wayside, Lord, that we look to you, Lord, that you are faithful, Lord, you will never leave us, never Lord, forsake us, Lord. Our hope is secure in you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you first loved us, Lord. Yes, that you first loved yes, us, that you called yes, us by yes, name, Lord, each and yes, every one. That we might yes, know you, that we might be like you, and that we might represent you in this time, in this age, Lord. That you would be revealed in this day, in this age, Lord, in this city, Lord. Let your light shine, Lord. Let your light shine, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we just walk. We just walk. We simply walk out our days, Lord, trusting that you will have your perfect way, Lord, that you have it all mapped out, Lord, and that you have every solution to every problem that would come our way. Before we even see the problem, Lord, you have it all worked out, Lord. Trust in you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, you know every hair on our head, Lord. Jesus, that your love is never failing. That you are faithful to the end, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus.
Eastern Gate House of Prayer this Friday. Yeah. Do we have a theme or do we have scriptures or is it to be determined? The Holy Spirit will reveal. I feel like peace. Like I feel peace. I think I think it's still rest and peace and, and trust and hope. I was praying the other day. I guess I do have something to share now that we're already into announcements. Um, I was praying about what, um, and then I just lost my train of thought. Um, the greatest of these is love. What are the other two? <laughs> I just lost faith my and faith and hope. Thank you. Faith and hope. Thank you. Faith, hope, and love, right? And the greatest of these is love. I don't think it's any coincidence that there's three, right? There's faith and there's hope and there's love. And our God is expressed in a man, in a Holy Spirit, and in a Heavenly Father. And if we want to understand all of who he is, we need to understand faith. Faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Hope that comes from the Holy Spirit that constantly encourages us. And love. Our God is love. Our God is love. Do we understand that he doesn't do love? He doesn't act out love. He doesn't sometimes love us and, and withdraw. He is love. He can be nothing but love for us. Amen. And that is what sustains our hope. And that is what, that is what encourages our faith. So I encourage you, faith, hope, and love in all of our God. Amen. 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 For Israel. Yeah, there's a lot going on right there. Okay. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Yes, Lord. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Yes, Lord.
There are higher heights, there are deepest seas, whatever you need to do, Lord, do in me the glory.
Praise God. As often as the case, it sounded like. Whether it's fishes and loaves, or voices, or praise. Hallelujah. Amen. He inhabits it. Praise God. I love the Lord. Amen. He just, he, he's not impressed with numbers. He'll come, show up, manifest. It's glory. Yes. Your glory to are gathered together in my name. Yes. I'll be there in the yes. midst of them, he said. Hallelujah. Praise God. So whatever you came for tonight. here. It's available. You just receive it by faith. Amen. Just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise Woo! God. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I'd be looking for a trust right now. At least. <laughs> oh my God. That was really a Nathan there. Praise the Lord. That was, that was good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I was just uh, showing Sally something here a minute ago. I'll share with you. It's pretty deep. But uh, Murphy was in his kitchen fixing some coffee and toast, and uh, he dropped the toast. But it landed butter side up. And Murphy said, it's a miracle. Everybody knows that whenever you drop buttered toast, it always lands. It's a law. It always lands butter side down. He couldn't believe it. He was just beside himself. So he ran and got the priest from the local church and had him come over to declare this a miracle. So the priest came over and Murphy didn't tell him what had happened. He just wanted him to come and see it. So the priest walks in. He sees the, the buttered toast laying there, butter side up. And uh, Murphy says, well, what do you think? And he said, well, obviously somebody's come and turned that toast over since you dropped it. Oh, no, he said, honestly, I, when I dropped it, it landed butter side up. And the priest said, everybody knows it's like, a, it's like a, a, the law of gravity. He said, it always ends up butter side down. The priest said, it's a miracle. Wait a minute. He said, I can't, I can't go that far. He said, I'm going to have to go get the bishop because we have to be very careful about these things. So he went. He got the bishop. The bishop called Rome, and they sent out a team from the Curia in Rome to investigate, and they sent scientists. And for eight weeks, they studied this supposed miracle. And at the end of the eight weeks, of course, the whole community is, is hoping that it'll be declared a miracle for the uh, revenue that will come in from tourism to come to this holy site where the miracle took place. Finally, the, the priest comes and he says, well, he said, I, it's time to make the declaration he said that uh, whether this is a miracle or not, he said we have to be very careful because uh, these are holy things, and if we were to go too quickly to declare it a miracle and we were wrong, then it could undermine the work of the church and the Holy Spirit. So he said, I'm going to declare today, sadly, that this was not a miracle. We believe that Murphy buttered the wrong side of the bread. <laughs> exactly. Praise the Lord. My thoughts exactly, James. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wonder bread, yeah. Well, okay. Hallelujah. So lighten up and let's just move on. Praise the Lord. Buttered the wrong side. Poor Murphy. It's Murphy's law, right? All right, I want to read a couple of scriptures to you this evening. Beginning, uh, we'll read Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, and then 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Praise the Lord. And by the way, Roberto, not only did you and Suzanne and the others do a great job Sunday morning uh, standing in for Mike and just taking up the worship, and you all did 
excellent, and I know Mike's already told you that, but I'll just repeat it. He also did a very good job on the scriptures. Yeah. First time, excellent. Amen. He did great. We only found one flaw in the whole thing. And I, I won't bring it up because there's no point in embarrassing you now. <laughs> it's to do with announcements, but we'll just leave it at that. Praise <laughs> Yeah, they want it all typed out and, you know, triplicate, and, but we don't do triplicate. I'm lucky to get uno, <laughs> praise the Lord. Okay, uh, Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Now, 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Keep this scripture in mind now. Praise the Lord. 1 Timothy 2 and 4. Let's see, if I gave you all that in advance, then the, you really wouldn't have a job, would you? I mean, there really wouldn't be anything for you to do. This is, this is the challenge. Praise the Lord who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now, I, uh, somebody asked, uh, I don't know if it was today, the other day, was asking, not me directly, but somebody else, and then they asked me about it, but, you know, about why things happen, you know, certain things happen in people's lives, and they don't do this or this doesn't do that, or is God doing something to, you know, to make that, negative a positive or is he actually putting negative situations on people for some other reason and all that kind of stuff well in a in a in a way that's what made me start thinking about this because when i read this scripture what do you do with this amen god desires something that in fact doesn't happen you would think that if god wills it it just it's a done deal right but God doesn't save everybody, even though he desires that all be saved. You can think about this in terms of healing, finances, and everything else. Right? Because it falls under the same kind of uh, category. Why? Because there is something else that he wills or desires more that would be lost if he exerted his sovereign power to just save all. That's an uh, Arminian uh, uh, doctrine that everybody's saved. Everybody's going to be saved in the end. And I don't believe that. But if you read this scripture from their point of view, you can see why they would say that. It's his will that all should come to repentance and be saved. It's his desire that everybody, he will, have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. And yet we know that's not the facts, right? right? So it's God's will for all to be saved. But God is committed to do to something that's even more valuable than saving all. Praise the Lord. So what does God will more than saving all. Self-will. And the possible result of that is the love relationship that comes out of our self-will. Our making the decision to believe, to love God, to serve God, whatever, you know. That is more valuable than just by grace saving everybody. Praise the Lord. Look at Romans chapter 9, verse 22. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. 
Satan, what if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? That is the manifestation of the full scope of God's glory. Because God already knows who is and who isn't, who will and who won't. And yet, he still extends grace and mercy to the wrath, the vessels of wrath. It's to show the full scope of his glory, to reveal the, the, the fullness of, of God. All right, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 29. that no flesh should glory in his presence. Okay, that's, that's man coming to the end of their self and giving all the credit to God for his salvation. No glory in it for us. It's all the glory goes to God. Right? I mean, he's the one who's doing it. Praise the Lord. So we've got free will. We've been given free will. Free will, which is human self, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, where we began, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So the need of free will is the explanation for why all are not saved. You've got to have free will Right? In order for God's glory to really be known, not God just doing it, forcing people or making it happen, but people making a choice because of God's grace, because of God's mercy, because of his long suffering, even with the vessels of wrath. So free will or the human self is the explanation for why everybody isn't saved, even though it's the will of God for him to be saved. Praise the Lord. All right. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 through 26. 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. And Paul is going to show us here why some people don't come to the knowledge of the truth. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Amen. So here, that's what Paul's doing here. He's explaining uh, the, the why people aren't saved or the, the reason why some people don't come to the knowledge of the truth. Praise the Lord. All right. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood. How many of you can agree with that? Praise the Lord. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. As, though, as they do also the other scriptures under their own destruction. Now you can say that about healing, you can say that about many things, because there are people who argue against healing, even people who sit under preaching uh, of healing, they still have con conflicted views on that, and a double-minded man is unstable in all the, his ways. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of different ways. I, not to pick on James, but just for an example, he was talking about how aggravated he was about this person turning in him for playing his drums. And I told him, I said, James, the Bible says that revenge is mine, saith the Lord. If, if you want the right outcome, leave it in God's hands. That's hard to do. I mean, we want to say something. We want to retaliate. We want to whatever. But what we're doing is actually empowering the enemy when we do that. Right. Now we're consumed with this aggravation and frustration, whatever it is. And James isn't the only one that goes through this. It just happens to be what he went through here recently. But right. all of us are confronted with these things all the time. We're either going to trust in what God has said or you're going to try to do it. 
And believe me, at some point you'll come to the end of yourself. You'll get frustrated. You'll get, you know, you get confrontational. You lose your ability to really be a witness now to that person because you freaked out on them and went nutty. And God's opportunity then to be revealed to them in a true light has been diminished as far as you're concerned. Amen? So Paul's telling us, God has the ability to look at things in life, to look at the world through, through two different lenses. And so on the one hand, he has a narrow lens that he looks at, and then on the other he has this like a wide-angle lens. When he looks at a painful or a wicked event through a narrow lens, he sees the tragedy or the sin for what it is in itself, just the act itself. And the Bible says he's angered and grieved. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 32. I'm not trying to make God seem schizophrenic. I'm trying to explain what looks like contradictions sometimes in the Bible that causes people to be conflicted in the way then that they, they respond to circumstances and situations. For God says, I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Right? So he, he's not getting any thrill out of the people that don't come to God. He gets no pleasure from that whatsoever. All right? And then Ephesians chapter 4, verses uh, 29 and 30. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Praise the Lord. So when God looks at a painful or a wicked event through the wide-angle lens, he sees the tragedy or the sin in relation to everything that leads up to it and everything that flows out from it. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm not going to over try to explain, but for, the, for an example, the people who don't respond to God as opposed to those who do. There's a bigger picture than just not or do. There's everything that comes into that and everything that flows out of that. How we see it, how, the, how eternity views it is how God sees it from the wide angle. He doesn't see it just as this person rejects. He sees it for, as we said before, God's long suffering that all would repent or that he is patient with these vessels of wrath, even knowing that they're not going to respond, or at least knowing who will and who won't, right? He sees it, in other words, in all the connections and all the effects that form a pattern stretching all the way through eternity. Now that's why these sayings are hard for us that Paul talks about, because we can't see that. We have to just accept things by faith because we don't see it the way God sees it. We can't grasp these things the same way God does. This is where the faith, hope, and love comes in. Our faith and our hope is in his love. Amen? And it encourages us, as Suzanne said, to have greater faith and to hope even, as Abraham in Abraham's case, where there was nothing to hope for in the natural. Praise the Lord. For example, uh, well, let, let, first let's look at Hebrews chapter 4. Uh, no, 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 wait a minute, back up. Let's go to Psalms 115 and verse 3. If that didn't totally confuse you, I'm not doing my job. But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he pleased. Praise the Lord. All right, now Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Mm 
For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Praise the Lord. So here's the example. The Lord hears in one split second in time, in one moment, the prayers. Did you ever think about this? Of millions and millions, if not billions, all at the same time, all in one moment. And he sympathizes with each one personally and individually. All right, look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Now, how does God do that? Imagine, I'm, I'm uh, rejoicing over some blessing and uh, James is weeping over some bad thing. Now, then multiply that by millions and millions. So how, is, how can God do that when both of them are coming to him at the same time? Or how about that he's angry at sin every day, and yet he loves the sinner? There's a purpose greater here. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Right? That he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now we are all sons of God but there's only one begotten. The rest of us all came through a second birth, a born again experience. But we're all in the family. We're all children of God. Right? Right? All right, back again to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So God loves the world with a real, a sincere compassion. And he desires the salvation of all people. Of all men, right? God has chosen from before the foundation of the world those whom he will save from sin. Those that he knew would respond even though not all people are going to be saved. Praise the Lord. God's will for all people to be saved isn't at odds with the sovereignty of his grace and election. Election by grace. God's will is to save all people. His supreme commitment to uphold and display the full range of his glory. That's what he's doing when he says, it's not my will that any perish. That's why he says have, he would have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is to display his supreme commitment. Jesus died for everybody, whether everybody responded or not, right? He's showing his supreme glory, the, the supremacy of his glory and his commitment. Amen? The full range for everybody. No matter how evil, no matter how wicked, no matter what. See, his plan from all of eternity was to magnify his glory in creation and in redemption. Just because everybody don't get it doesn't mean that isn't what he's doing. One day they will. Nevertheless, he aimed to make the glory of his grace the highest revelation of himself. Throughout eternity, that'll be the greatest revelation anybody has. 
of God is this grace. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Grace is the greatest revelation of God's glory. And we've got people freaking out and afraid to even talk about it. When in fact it's the thing that fills the entire earth with his glory. Praise God. So Jesus invites everybody to come. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everyone who receives Christ has been chosen from the foundation of the world and is an heir of God. He invites everybody to come, and everybody who does come was chosen. Praise the Lord. Because of God's love and the salvation by Christ, those who believe in his name are united with Christ and enjoy him and all of his gifts forever. So eternity will declare this glory. Now, let's close with this. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're not an accident. If, if you're a believer, you have no idea how long you've been a believer. Before Adam. Yes. Amen. When God was just thinking about all of this, you were already chosen. Now, the more, you know, the more we understand that, the more we want to give glory to God. The more we realize the beauty and the, and the genius, beyond genius, of this. Self-will. It sounds like a crapshoot. It is. But it's the thing also that brings us to a relationship where we can have this love relationship with God. Without it, we'd never love God. We'd never have any appreciation for God. God would never get glory. He would just be the, the, the ruler, mm -hmm. Lord over all. But he's father. Yeah. He's a husband. And it's only through us having free will that his glory can really be revealed. So if you think of it from those terms, it's the people rejecting this it just brings more glory to God. Not that God's enjoying that. He gets no enjoyment out of people dying or going to hell. But it's showing that he's done it for everybody, knowing how many will not do this. I mean, think about it. God in the flesh, he goes to the cross for the entire world. But he knows not the, the, you know, the, the entire world's not going to respond. And yet he dies for them anyway. Now, if that isn't glorious, you know, it says, you know, for a good man might die for a good person. But God so loved the world that he died for those, not only were they bad people, but they would reject him and his sacrifice. And that's what I think about when, you know, when people with sickness or disease, you know, we, we owe it, whether I get manifestation or don't get manifestation, my belief in that promise of healing brings glory to God, whether anybody else recognizes that or not. Because it shows my faith in Him, my faith in His love, my faith in His, His goodness. I don't, I don't understand everything. Nobody does. But I do know what the Word says. And we're to edify. The only way you can be edifying is by agreeing with the Word of God and staying positive. So when, when we have disappointments, <laughs> it's so easy to fall into that trap of self-will and just retaliate or get even or whatever. It doesn't bring glory to God. 
and it diminishes us at the same time. It makes us manipulated or used by the devil and his will instead of God's will. If we always stay focused on God and revealing his glory, our job becomes very simple. We just trust in the love of God. I mean, think about how, why we should love the Lord. I'm not trying to dictate that you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. I know we can't do that even though we want to do it sometimes. We fall short of that. But the reason that we love the Lord is because, look, we're special. Amen. We've been chosen. I don't get all of that. I just know that out there are countless millions who don't know God, have no hope. And yet, they will bring glory to God. Even the devil will bring glory to God before this is all over with. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess yes. that he's Lord. And the whole earth, heaven's already filled with his glory, but the entire earth is going to be filled with his glory because of his grace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when you see what looks like contradictions, they're not contradictions. It's just some hard stuff to understand sometimes because God isn't like us. He was wanting us to be like him. And in the spirit, we already are, but our minds are not renewed to that. I mean, just think about a simple message like this. Imagine eternity with the mind of God. Oh, man. Oh, I so want to see my algebra professor from college. <laughs> the first day. I'm going to give him some stuff that only God knows. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Early night. Enjoy it. Hallelujah. See you all Sunday. Come back. Let's worship the Lord.